Welcome to PMBA 611 Financial Analysis. I'm Lynn Coogley, your instructor this summer, and I made this intro video to introduce myself and go over some of the main points from the syllabus. If you don't have a copy of the syllabus right there, you might want to pause the presentation and get one so you can kind of follow along. I'm only going to hit the high points. The syllabus is very long, and it's meant to try to cover just about everything from, about this course from start to finish. As I said, my name is Lynn Coogley, and I'm a finance faculty member domiciled at the Ole Miss campus in South Haven, Mississippi. This is my eighth year at Ole Miss and my 18th year teaching at the college level. I went back to school for my Ph.D. after over 25 years in the corporate world. My beat is posted on my website if you're really interested in all the details. I strongly suggest email as the best way to contact me, with my home phone being the second best option. Now on to the details of how PMBA 611 is going to work. 611 is a fundamental course in corporate finance designed to provide you with the finance skills and theory you'll need in the rest of the MBA program. The topics shown in black type should be primarily review from your undergraduate finance prereq. We may go a bit further in some of them, but basically the material should look very familiar. The topics in red may well be new to many of you. They're designed to introduce areas of finance that go beyond the basics to topics typically addressed by management in a firm. The use of financial options, capital structure, and dividend policy, for example. Well, you definitely have to have the textbook, Financial Management Theory and Practice by Brigham and Earhart. This is the 14th edition and is an excellent textbook. It's available in hard copy to rent or purchase if you feel you must have a hard copy. The last page of the syllabus provides information on buying the ebook with Applia, the online homework system. This is a much less expensive option and you must have Applia access. You can use the ebook and access Applia until June 14th without paying, so you should set up your account now. You can print from the ebook if you want a hard copy of a section or a chapter. You definitely need a financial calculator. I prefer and I use the Texas Instruments Business Analyst 2 Plus. It's about $30 at Amazon, Walmart, etc. And finally, I guess it's pretty obvious you need internet access. As you'll see on the next slide, this course primarily uses Blackboard, except for Applia, which is linked out from Blackboard. And you'll need Microsoft Office. We'll be using Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. I'm using both 2010 and 2016, so whatever version you have will probably be fine. The Mac version is fine as well but you definitely need to be comfortable with basic Excel skills. Excel assignments count for 15% of your grade, and the quantitative portions of exams require Excel. The expectation is that MBA students come in with a certain level of quantitative skills. Math, basic algebra, order of operations, statistics, probability distribution, standard deviation, use of a financial calculator, use the available functions, and Excel basic numeric entry and manipulation, copying, relative addressing, and using the functions. Some of these areas may have gotten a bit rusty, and Applia does provide some review materials. In addition, I've created a series of video tutorials covering several of these areas so we can all start on an even footing. A set of six videos reviewing material you need to bring into 611 is posted on Blackboard under Pre-Course. A second set of 12 tutorials are posted with the units of study to help clarify some of the more complex calculations. The six pre-course tutorials cover the TI Business Analyst 2 Calculator, Order of Operations, Manually and in Excel, Excel Basics, Standard Deviation, and Weighted Average. As you can see in the list, there are also 10 tutorials from Microsoft and 4 from GCF specifically covering Excel 2013 topics. These are all well done and worth the time to watch. Now, none of these are required per se, but I strongly suggest you take the time to view any for areas you feel you need to review. If you watch them all, the time is about an hour and 15 minutes. Links to all tutorials are posted in Blackboard. These pre-course videos are posted under pre-course and are also under all tutorials. These are the 12 videos addressing specific topics in the units of study. Each is posted with the unit and in all tutorials. Again, these are not required viewing, but if you're having trouble with any of these topics, watching a brief tutorial working through a problem step by step may help. If other topics arise as the semester unfolds, additional tutorials can be added. 
The embedded links take you to a YouTube posting of the video. You can speed up the playback up to two times as fast, kind of daffy duck speed, or you can slow it down. You can show them as posted or full screen. As you can see from the list, just about everything is in Blackboard. Everything related to a unit of study is posted together and opens or becomes available together. Each narrated PowerPoint lecture has an associated PDF file of the slides and notes also posted with the unit. The PDF file can be viewed on a PC, transferred to an iPhone or iPad via Dropbox, or to a Kindle or Android device using Box and viewed there for review. Since this is an online class, communication really is critical. I check my email all the time, so that's always the best way to contact me. Please include PMBA 611 in the subject line so emails won't go to the junk mail folder by accident. And also, please use your full name in the text so I'll know for sure who you are, because sometimes email addresses and names don't match. If you do not get a reply from me within 24 hours, something is probably wrong, because I am well known for answering emails very quickly. If that happens, either email me again or call my home phone and leave a message. I realize that you're all probably taking this course because you're working adults. That means when you have a question, you need a quick answer so you can move along with the material when you have a window of opportunity to study. I've been a working adult student myself. I understand. Grading, always an important question in any class. You can see the weighting distribution on the slide. The exams do count heavily, but I'm also placing significant weight on the APLIA and Excel assignments. Excel is critical to success both in the MBA program and in the corporate environment. If for any reason you miss an exam, the weight will be added to the final, making it worth 50% of your grade. If at the end of the term you're unhappy with your grade on exam 1 or 2, you may elect for the final to count 50%. All exams will be live proctored either by the university or via ProctorU. Live proctoring through the university is available in the Distance Learning Office Testing Center in Oxford or at a regional campus, DeSoto or Tupelo. ProctorU is an online live proctoring service available for a fee. Full details are in the syllabus. Exams will be in Blackboard. Each exam will include both multiple choice conceptual questions as well as quantitative problems. The quantitative problems are to be worked in a provided Excel template. Working the problems in Excel serves two purposes. First, it improves your Excel skills. Second, showing your work provides the opportunity for partial credit. Graded homework problems are in APLIA and they count for 10% of your grade. The problems mirror and sometimes extend the material in the text. Quantitative problems are algorithmic. The numbers change with each attempt. You may attempt each question three times with the system recording your average score under a system called Do No Harm. If you attempt a problem a second or third time, your score will only be averaged in if it doesn't lower your average. A certain level of skill with Excel is really critical for success in the MBA program, as well as in the corporate world today. At this point, you should all have basic Excel skills. These assignments will build on those basics and expand to include familiarity with the financial functions available in Excel. Each chapter has an associated Excel assignment, which is posted in Blackboard with the unit. These are to be done independently, but if you email me, I will provide reasonable feedback. These should be a learning experience, so I want to help you both with the materials and with Excel. Discussion is a critical part of this course. To facilitate communication, I've established two discussion forums, the water cooler and course questions. The goal is for all of you to communicate with each other as well as with me in much the same way you would if we were all in a live class together. Many times your questions can be answered by another student before I answer. Using the discussion forums will make the questions and answers available to all. This is an online class, not a correspondence course. As such, we'll work through the material together, no working ahead. I've divided the course into seven units, each containing from one to three chapters. Within each unit, chapters are subdivided into segments so that each lecture runs about 15 minutes or less. Each topic unit will be open for 10 days to provide ample time for everyone to work through the material. You can always go back and review previous units, but you can't alter any graded material. This is my suggested study sequence for addressing the material in each chapter and unit. Read the chapter. Listen to the narrated PowerPoint lectures. 
The PowerPoint lectures generally follow the mini case at the end of each chapter and cover the chapter material, but there may be topics in the chapter that are not in the narrated lecture. View any video tutorials posted for the unit, work the APLIA problems, work the Excel assignment. This is the tentative schedule for the course, and it's also posted in Blackboard. Barring any problems, we'll follow this schedule exactly. As you can see, the first unit, Unit A, covers only one chapter, the time value of money, which should be a review for all of you. That will get us started on a light note and give everyone a chance to access all the materials so we can answer any questions and work through any problems early on. Units open on a Friday at 12 a.m. and close on a Sunday at 11.59 p.m., giving you 10 days for each unit except Unit A. Note that Unit F covers three chapters within the same 10-day time frame. This is on the last page of your syllabus, how to set up a Cengage Applia account and register for the Applia course. It is not possible to purchase Applia access separately. It comes with the ebook. And going directly through Cengage and purchasing Applia with the ebook as described on this slide and in the syllabus is by far the easiest and least expensive route. You should go ahead and do that now. You can begin to look at the materials and ebook beginning on May 25th. Introduction done. Be sure to read through the whole syllabus, and if you have any questions, email me, or since the course is now available in Blackboard, try out the course questions forum under discussion. I'll check it soon and respond to anything posted. And don't forget to post your own introduction in the water cooler forum so we can get to know each other. And now would be a good time to go through the pre-course tutorial so you'll be ready when the semester begins. Unit A covers only Chapter 4. It opens on June the 1st, so be ready to get started.